when you're sitting in your office doing research and writing papers and making new discoveries about this stuff, do you imagine it like this? Do you imagine them as rings going through other rings? Absolutely, that, you, yeah. They don't just become equations and things on paper to you. It become, it's still almost like you visualize it. I mean, they do be, equations do come up, but, uh, but when I think about, uh, when I want to prove something, I often think about them as physical objects because that's where, that's where intuition comes from. You don't just do equations and manipulate and algebraic manipulations uh, that somehow just comes like out of the out of thin air. Uh, there has to be some something driving it, and that something is sometimes very abstract, but sometimes something that you can absolutely get your hands on. I can't imagine a fourth dimension. Are you, can you do it? So my favorite way of visualizing it is, is to think of it in terms of movies in three dimensions. And that is actually a little bit restrictive uh, because, because you visualize the fourth dimension as time and time only moves forward. So there's kind of, uh, uh, when, when something moves backwards in time, all of a sudden you can't really imagine how that works. In uh, general, in four-dimensional space, you can do that. You can move backwards, like the same way as I can move in any direction in three-dimensional space, you can move forwards and backwards in time as you wish. So this point of view that is my favorite has this little um, drawback uh, that I somehow sometimes have to get around. Uh, but there's ways of imagining it and drawing pictures uh, about four-dimensional objects, um, which uh, some people are better at than me, um, and, uh, and occasionally I have to do myself. <laughs>